Today we're talking about comping within Pro Tools. So many guys probably have heard of comping and some of you guys may have not. But don't worry about that. We're actually going to go over what comping is, best practices, and I'm going to give you guys a full demo of how to comp takes within Pro Tools in this tutorial. So comping is something that is going to save you guys a lot of time in your recording sessions and it's probably one of the best features that exists within DAWs today. So if you guys want to learn all about comping, stick around after this introduction. Welcome everybody, I'm Dan Spencer and I am the Audio Sourcer. So this is the channel where I teach you how to perfect your audio recording, mixing and mastering skills. So before we get to the video, make sure you guys smash the like button, please subscribe and hit that notification bell to not have new videos coming out. So without further ado, today we are talking about comping within Pro Tools. So what is comping? So comping is basically taking multiple recordings and selecting the best takes from each performance in creating one master take. So there's a lot of different ways to go about doing this, but I think there's only one really good way to go about doing it. And we'll talk about that in this tutorial. And I think comping is probably one of the best features any DAW has to offer because it saves you so much time. And it's probably best and most useful when it comes to vocals. So that's how we're going to display it in this tutorial. Before we get to that, I do want to mention for you guys that are interested in learning more about Pro Tools, I have a playlist popping up in the top right corner now that is full of Pro Tools training videos. So these videos have been made throughout time and this playlist is basically living and breathing. I keep adding videos to it. And these videos range from beginner to intermediate to advanced. There's pretty much something in there for everyone. And best of all, since they're on YouTube, it's absolutely free. So definitely take advantage of this free training, all right? So that being said, let's move on with this video and let's get into a vocal comping example. All right, so the first thing that we actually need to do is create an audio track. So as you guys know by watching this channel, we use keyboard shortcuts. So on a PC, it is Control-Shift-N to launch the new tracks window. On a Mac, it is Command-Shift-N. So we are going to do a mono audio track, and we'll just simply call it Vox. So we'll create that, and then we actually lengthen it out here. All right, so the second thing we wanna do is make sure that we have loop record enabled. So if you go over to your little record button here, if you right click on it, you wanna make sure that loop has the check mark by it, which mine does, so I'm good to go on my end. And the next thing you wanna do is actually go up to setup, down to preferences, and then in the operation tab here, you wanna make sure that automatically create new playlist when loop recording is checked. This is very important for comping, all right? So make sure that's checked and then hit okay. So that is all the stuff that needs to be set up initially to make sure that comping is ready to go. So now we're actually going to record some vocal takes and then we will comp them. So for the recording portion, there is one thing you have to do before you actually start recording your takes. You have to define your loop. And what I mean by that is we have to actually highlight on the timeline what we want our loop to be. So for this example here, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to just count out the digits one through eight to the metronome, and that's what I'm gonna do for three takes. So that's gonna be an example here. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna leave the first measure here, measure one free, that's gonna be my count off, and I'm gonna record on measures two and three, all right? So my loop is actually going to start at one and go to measure four. So this is my loop here, all right? You just highlight it on the timeline like that. And the reason you wanna have some space at the beginning is because as this loops here, you're gonna need a little breather to catch your breath when it goes back to the beginning here. So that's why I always leave a little bit of space. So just keep that in mind when you're actually doing your vocal takes, you're gonna to need to do this when you do actual vocal takes, all right? So the next step is just to simply hit the uh, record button here and then okay, let's, let's actually record, record some takes. takes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five. 
five, six, seven, eight. All right, so we got our three vocal takes recorded and we'll let you know on a track if there are takes within it is this little arrow right here. It'll be lit up in blue. This is where my mouse is at here and you hover over it, it says playlist selector. If you click on it, you'll see at the bottom here, it actually shows you the takes right here. So I don't recommend actually accessing the takes right here. If you go to where it says waveform here on this button here, click on this and then go down to playlist here. And then you're gonna see, here's your three takes. So there always has to be one take in the actual main track here, all right? So you're always gonna see one of them there. And I can't remember if it's usually the first one or last one. I actually believe it's the last one that shows up within here, all right? Not that that really matters, okay? So now let's actually get down to comping. What I wanna do is I'm going to lengthen out these here so we can have a better view of them. Let's actually zoom in a bit. So we have a good view of them here. And we don't really need to listen to them here because for me just counting, we're not actually doing this to actually hear which one sounds better because this is an actual vocal performance. It's just me counting. So what we can do is we can be like, oh, so we listen to this here. We're like, well, I think one and two from this second vocal take right here sounds the best. So what I need to do is I need to highlight it like this. Okay, and then I simply need to go over to the up button here, click it, and then it moves it right up to here onto the track. So, one caveat though, you have to remember though, since there's always one main track up here, this will overwrite this main track here and delete it permanently, okay? So yes, I can get it back by simply dragging it here, but if there is no remnants of this green track here at all, like you pretty much took both of these two purple tracks here, then you're not gonna have any access to it. And then also if you end up bouncing down this track, then yes, you're gonna lose it completely anyway. So things to think about, all right? But anyway, let's actually just kind of comp this real quickly for fun. All right, so we highlight these here, move them up. Then let's say we like three and four from the last take here. We hit the up arrow over here. And then let's say we actually like five and six from the green track here, so we'll keep it. And let's say, I don't know, we like seven from this track here, with the up arrow here. And then we like eight from this one here. And then we hit up. And as you guys saw, I just comped a track there. So now we have a combination of all three tracks right there. And that's pretty much all there is to vocal comping or comping in general. So what you would want to do from this point going forward is actually do some editing. You actually want to go in here and probably, you know, clean this up a bit here. So, you know, we can attach these here. We can put some crossfades in like that. And if you guys don't want to do crossfades, as long as the two waveforms are attached here, you go to the bottom and then you can kind of pull to the left or right and get your little crossfade like that. Again, you got to listen when you're doing this. And... I'm on the grid now, so you might actually want to be more um, surgical with it and go to slip. But just for this you know, purpose, for this tutorial, we're going to just keep working on grid. And then we can do a crossfade here. And then we can do one here. And then we can get rid of the beginning here, clean this up a bit. And get rid of this here. You can drag it on in. Maybe we'll do a little fade in too, like that. So again, this is just a quick little edit of me doing this without even listening to it here. But this is just an example of how you would comp a vocal track and then actually go in and kind of fine tune and edit it, all right? So that's pretty much all there is to it. Now, comping can get more complicated because when I do vocal takes myself, I can get up into, I don't know, usually it's about 10 for me, but I know other people that'll keep going. They start getting up into the 30s. And then of course they have multiple vocal tracks on top of that, doing ad libs, backing vocals, all kinds of stuff. So, you know, your your sessions start getting pretty large when it comes to file size when you start doing all that. But they, hey, that's what it takes to make, you know, songs sometimes. And that's that's what's great about vocal comping. It keeps things very organized. All right. So I hope you guys like this uh, you know, tutorial here. And if you did, give it a thumbs up. And if you guys like what I'm doing, please subscribe and hit that notification bell to know how new videos coming out. So with that being said, until the next video, I will see you guys later and peace out.